Hi there folks. In this video we're going to have a look at some shot shell wads. And this particular wad is a Claybuster brand product. And it is a 3 quarter ounce 12 gauge wad, which makes it kind of unusual. You can see they're in these 500 count bags. Kind of an obnoxious uh, neon pink color. And they come with loading data in the bag, which is kind of handy. The handy feature of these bags is they are a zip lock top bag, so you don't have to have any twist ties around. I kind of like that feature compared to the ones that you had to tie off. Anyway, having a closer look at the wad itself, it is a Winchester style of wad. You can see it's got the collapsing legs there, and it has a very large center section. This is uh, basically three quarters of an inch of space in here between the shot cup and the gas seal. So these are a Winchester style wad because of the, the overall design with that cushion section in the middle with the legs. And they have a bit of a tapered gas seal section here. You can see there's some minor sort of flutes in this to let air out when you're seating the wad. And a fairly short shot cup section which is appropriate for the very small payload. So normally you go to the store and you buy a box of 12 gauge shells. They will be generally uh, ounce and an eighth or perhaps one ounce. However, uh, when it comes to reloading there are some reasons to load even less than, uh, than those payloads. And the big two are price and recoil management. So the first one being price, obviously the more shots you can get out of a bag of lead uh, the better for price, especially since commercially bought lead is uh, uh, its actually quite ridiculously expensive at the moment and if you're buying shot at full price it really doesn't pay to reload 12 gauge it makes more sense to buy if you're going to buy uh, promotional type ounce and an eighth or one ounce shells it's, it's generally cheaper than you can load them if you are paying the big prices that they want for commercial shot. Luckily where I live there's a local guy who makes lead shot and sells it for a better price than the commercial stuff so it actually does pay to reload shells still here as long as that supply of, of uh, reasonably priced lead holds up. Um, when you're switching to a very light load like this you can actually get 500 and I think it's 533 shots out of a bag of lead with a three quarter ounce payload. So that, uh, that puts the price of each shell down a bit more, which is nice. And the other uh, big advantage to the light payload, of course, is lighter recoil, because, of course, the less, um, the less projectile you're sending out the barrel at a comparable speed, the less recoil. And that becomes kind of a pleasant thing if you're going to shoot a lot. Um, it's also good if you have a new shooter who might be more recoil sensitive. Um, it's also handy if you're shooting a very lightweight gun where the recoil is more pronounced. I like to play around with some of the uh, single shot shotguns and quite often those are quite lightweight. It's not too bad to fire a couple of shells out of them in a hunting situation, but if you go to the ski club and you decide to, you know, play around with a old single shot shotgun for and fire, you know, 50 or 75 shells, uh, an ounce and an eighth shell can be uh, a bit much. So these might make that uh, experience a little more pleasant shooting the lighter amount of shot. So there is some load data uh, included with the, uh, the wads here. So you get this is basically the label for the, uh, the bag and it also unfolds into some, uh, some data. This data is also available on the, I believe the Hogden website has this data as well. So you've got data for Winchester AAHS hulls. I believe you could also use the old compression formed hulls with this data as well. They are considered to be interchangeable. So they list uh, extra light powder, red dot powder, and clay dot powder, as well as uh, uh, various charge weights to give you velocities from, what is it, 12, 25 to 1300 feet per second. You'll note that the, uh, the pressures are low for these. They also give load data for the federal gold metal plastic hull. Uh, same powders once again, and using federal primers this time. Same sort of speed ranges from 1200 feet per second to 1300. 
amazingly low pressures for some of these. Uh, you're down as low as, what, 5,500 PSI? It's hard to believe that uh, you could get a shell to reliably function with that light of pressure, but I don't think I'm going to try these gold metal loads uh, myself. I think I'll stick with the, uh, the hulls that have less internal capacity. Um, generally speaking, the smaller the, the inside of the hull, the better these sort of light shells work because the powder is confined a bit better. We've also got data here for Remington STS. Same powders once again using a Remington 209P primer. Then they've got uh, a page and a half of data for the uh, Remington STS Nitro 27 or Gun Club plastic shells. And they list tight wad uh, clays and 700X powder for those with a variety of primers. Chedite 209 Federal 209A Remington 209P and Winchester 209. So that's a pretty reasonable selection of commonly available powders and primers and hulls. So if you want to load up some of these light shells, there's certainly that resource available for you. And like I said, also on the, uh, the Hogden website. So to give you an idea of how small an amount of shot, uh, three quarters of an ounce is, here's what it looks like inside the shot cup, inside a hull which has not been crimped obviously, but you can see that it comes up to, it's actually slightly below the top level of the, uh, the pedals on the wad. So uh, it, three quarters of an ounce is, is a pretty small amount of shot. Now the shot I'm using here is probably a little more dense than commercially made shot because this stuff was made out of wheel weights. It's a number eight size shot, but uh, so it weighs about 10 grains more than the bushing or the bar um, would call for. It's I think 338 grains, which is just, like I said, about 10 grains more than three quarters of, a, of an ounce, but not enough to worry about. But the, uh, the loads that I have tried putting together so far work out pretty good. As far as crimps go, you can see these are, you know, they're not fantastic crimps, but I did no adjustment to the machine at all. The machine, I just left it as it was set up as far as as, uh, as crimp, uh, taper crimp and final crimp. Obviously I changed the bar and the powder uh, bushing to suit. So there's a couple of, uh, there's an old AA compression formed hull. There's an AA HS hull. So not a terrible crimp. Like I said, that could be improved upon with some adjustment. If a person wanted to really dial that in, push the crimp in a little bit further. And here's one that was done up using a Remington Gun Club hull. That one turned out pretty well as well. So I loaded uh, these with 700X powder and these ones were loaded with uh, a charge of red dot from the load data. So these ones have Winchester primers and this one's got a federal primer in it. So anyway, just uh, a product that I was looking around for for a while. Nobody locally seemed to carry them. And the uh, the guys at the Skeet Club didn't seem to ever order any in when they were ordering components. So I have to thank a friend of mine, Jake's. He was uh, ordering some of these in and he got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted to try some. So I got a couple of bags of these. Um, thank you, Jake's, again. And I've also got some three quarter ounce 20 gauge uh, wads to go as well. So I might do a video on those in the future. So perhaps the next time you see these, we'll be at the range and we'll we'll try a few of these shells out to see how well they function. Uh, light shells can be a little bit of a toss-up if you don't get everything just right because you're operating at sort of the bottom end of the, the area where pressures and powders agree. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so you can get uh, bloopers and so forth if everything's not just right. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that these work well with no odd sounding shells and no bloopers and all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll talk to you again sometime soon, hopefully.